Hello and welcome. You are watching a live broadcast here on Beyond World is One, and we have some news that's breaking over here. The Indian government has uh, come out with a new notification on the lockdown situation in the country. The lockdown will remain in containment zones until the 30th of June. Meanwhile, there'll be a phased reopening. In the non-containment zone, this on a day when India reported its highest spike in COVID-19 cases, with 7,964 being re reported, and now the latest is that the Indian government has come out with a notification uh, which says that the lockdown in containment zones, the red zones, which have been identified, will extend until the end of the month of June, till the 30th of June. while there will be a phased reopening in the non containment zones in the country that's the latest lockdown 5.0 has been announced and uh, it will be a graded lockdown this time around the fifth phase of the lockdown those in the red containment zones the lockdowns in the red containment zones are set to continue further for another 4 weeks from the 1st of june to the 30th of june meanwhile certain specific relaxations have been given we have our political editor kartikeya sharma now joining us uh, on the phone line kartikeya talk to us this is a phased lockdown as well as a phased reopening i think it's uh, two things happening at the same time uh, when we are saying it's phased lockdown in the phased reopening what is happening is that the government is trying to recalibrate both the opening and stalling of the spread of the virus now the issue is that multiple state government had demanded that uh, they should be allowed to zone the area and the news which we broke last time so now since the lockdown has been extended till 30th of june and and what they have done is that uh, certain relaxation uh, have been given to certain businesses but the, i think the bigger or the broader take away for me is that the religious places places of worship hotels restaurants hospitality services will be permitted to open from june 8 2020 which means that uh, the most important areas uh, which would have led to larger congregations uh, which is hotels restaurants hospitality malls places of worship they will kick back into action now this can be a cause of concern also because you know you would allow the normal way of life to assume but in the case the normal way of life assume it also tells you that the infection rate can spike all across india now this is something the government must have calibrated as to why they want to do it but i think by 8th of june they want to completely kick start india into its normal way of life so for them to open places of worship hotels restaurants and hospitality services i think it's a big take away Right, absolutely. Opening hotels, restaurants, and religious places post the 8th of June for all those tuning into this broadcast. That's the latest uh, order issued by the Minister of Home Affairs of India, Kartikeya Sharma, with us on the phone. Kartikeya, even as those are reopened, the containment zones in the country, the red zones in the country, will continue to be under the current form of lockdown until the end of June. Absolutely. So what it says is that in the areas outside containment zone, all activities. Uh, will be permitted except following which will be allowed which means that certain rules and procedures krishna of the lockdown for uh, will be in place now for example the following activities will be allowed with as we discussed uh, from effect from june 8 which is religious places hotels uh, restaurants and shopping malls now which means that the people who were employed there get back their uh, employment now schools colleges educational institutions will be opened after consultation with the state government which means that the lockdown in this avatar uh, will see the opening up of the educational institutions only when chief ministers allow them and then most important of all based on the assessment of the situation dates for restarting the following activities will be decided international travel metro cinema halls gymnasiums swimming pools entertainment parks theaters bars auditorium assembly halls so you know these these are the new directives but yes night curfew will remain in uh, force but there's a there's a difference now earlier the night curfew which was between 7 pm to 7 am now the night curfew has been reduced to 9 pm to 5 am so there is a relaxation in the curfew also now the lockdown will continue to take place in the containment zones containment zones will be run the way they have been run 
But I think what they have done is that they have tweaked the curfew area for the orange and the green zone. Certain provisions of vulnerable people continue. Persons above 65 years of age, they pregnant women, people with comorbidities, they will not be allowed after the curfew. The application of RLG said to continues, Krishna. Uh, these guidelines will be strictly enforced. The penal provision also remains. But again, in this case, state governments have been given greater power in terms of deciding what is good or bad for them. So I think we can say after 8th of June, we will see a new normal India emerging in which state chief ministers Krishna will decide how theatre halls will open or how if the malls open, will they open on odd and even? How many people can sit in a restaurant? How many waiters can work? How many footfalls can be allowed? All this will be decided at a regional level. So in a way, we can say that this lockdown uh, is less of a lockdown, but more of an opening up procedure of the Indian economy. All right, Karthikeya Sharma, putting that into perspective. Karthikeya, uh, quickly, uh, before we let you go, at the, at the end of the day, this is a three-phased reopening of areas outside of the containment zones. Phase one will include religious places, hotels, restaurants, shopping malls, as you've been telling us. Phase two will be schools, colleges, and educational institutions. And phase three will be international air travel of passengers, metro rail, cinema halls and gymnasiums and, uh, you know, social, political, sports and entertainment and academic and activities and large congregations of that, of that sort. Uh, uh, so in that sense, uh, this is giving a guideline to the local governments, the regional governments, the state governments as to how to go about reopening their economies. I think that this is more in line with the federal structure. See, for example, uh, the state of Kerala and Delhi believe that the people should be home quarantined and they believe that the institutional quarantine does not function. The state of Uttar Pradesh believes that no, if a person is found to be COVID-19 positive, he should be sent to an institutional quarantine because they don't expect uh, everyone to be monitored from a state level because it's a big state, it's unlike Kerala. So every state will need to decide on their own as to how they would like to walk this path. But I would say that uh, the biggest decision the government has taken is to leave the decision to open up malls and allow places of worship to open after 8th of uh, June. Okay. I think that's a very, very big decision because world over, if you see, mm. uh, the first area of when we say the normalcy has resumed is when we allow people to go to their uh, religious centers or, you know, allow sporting institutions to open up. But then, lastly, children. I think that's the call which the government will need to take very seriously. Uh, no government will need to rush into the decision to open schools and colleges mm. because if you expose them to COVID-19, it can brutally impact or it can disrupt our social uh, infrastructure, social amenity because, you know, once the children of the society starts getting impacted, uh, it impacts the peace. So I think no one will take a decision in hurry to send children back to schools and colleges.